The modern battlefield boasts an assortment of new and emerging technologies meant to aid today's warfighters. But that same tech also offers a variety of signals and sensors that could reveal troops' locations to an enemy. Soldiers at the Joint Readiness Training Center in Fort Johnson, Louisiana, are combating this complex obstacle with simple and inexpensive methods. In a recent exercise, troops at the JRTC sparred with a simulated enemy nicknamed Geronimo. Their time in the field proved that a simple Raspberry Pi can disorient the enemy and force them to waste resources on decoy signals. During our recent visit, Captain Charles O'Hagan said a big problem Geronimo poses is finding signals from troops' personal devices, printers, and run-of-the-mill Wi-Fi connections. So here I have a MiFi puck uh, that came with the integrated tactical network systems we have, and uh, you know, for accountability reasons or whatnot, we would name them 2BCT TOC1 or TOC2. And then uh, during that January rotation, Geronimo has a capability known as the Grasshopper, picks up uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. SSIDs and naming conventions, so it's too easy to target. There's two MiFi pucks that have 2BCT talk. There's a printer that says 2BCT talk. Let's tip and queue, you know, a uh, small UAS platform to get eyes on this CP and then call for fire on it or develop the situation more. With typical connections and naming conventions out of the picture, the Army assessed options to not only fix the problem, but turn it against the adversary. Using pieces of cheap tech, they created decoy signals that pretend to be soldiers' Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connections, hoping to confuse the enemy. We created these Raspberry Pis. So it's a Raspberry Pi and then a, a SD card, and that's what gives it the SSID, and then the power source is what emits the SSID. The most expensive part is the power source. So really, we're looking at under $50 for a whole set, which is not about nine decoys. And we're able to program them with SSIDs such as 2BCT Talk or Charlie O'Hagan's iPhone and then put those in the battlefield so when Geronimo flew over flew us, they would not have a clear picture of what we looked like on the battlefield. And that worked um, during the JFE. Geronimo launched artillery in, into dirt because there was uh, decoys there that they, uh, they wanted to destroy. Given the low price of these decoys, O'Hagan also noted that they could be abandoned in real-life battlefield situations. Here, we're, we're going to go back and get them, but at the end of the day, they're inexpensive. Uh, real world, we just leave them. The batteries will die. You could also set the batteries for a certain amount of time, depending on how long you're trying to deceive. And the whole thing is uh, deception is protection for us. It's one thing to hide from the enemy, but troops at the JRTC also need to be able to detect the opposition. For that, they employed small drones, Wi-Fi adapters, and even duct tape to recreate the enemy's grasshopper capability. So we recreated the grasshopper. We call it the signal harvest, because of course you have to change the name. It's a, a Skydio, it's a quadcopter. It's small, SUAS has a flight time of 20 to 30 minutes, depending on the payload. We have a Wi-Fi uh, adapter here. There's a Raspberry 4 within this case, and then a power source. For the signal harvest itself, started off ground-based, and uh, during Operation Lethal Eagle in April, we were using zip ties and duct tape to get this onto our newly fielded Skydios and uh, trying to sense the enemy through the EMS. These simple solutions are all part of a new Army initiative dubbed Transformation in Contact, a tactic that challenges soldiers to adapt to real-world problems in real time on the training field, all with the task of being painfully light and disproportionately lethal. For more coverage on initiatives at the JRTC, head to armytimes.com.